Hey folks, if you follow me at all, you've noticed that I have uh, done a disassembly on a 2018 Stratocaster because I said I needed the body. I did a repair on a 2007 Highway 1 Strat neck. And so these two projects together have all sort of set me up for a place where I can build another Stratocaster. So that's what I'm going to do today. I've got a few parts. I've got that Mexican Stratocaster body. I've got the 2007 Highway 1 neck. I've got a, a pick guard that's loaded with uh, Fender 59 pickups and a few extra parts, so I'm just going to assemble that today. Step one, let's get this neck mounted. Uh, it's a pretty easy operation on a guitar that's already been put together at least once. Uh, this one, these two parts haven't been married to each other, but they have been on other fenders, so I don't expect an issue here. I'm going to use this Fender F neck plate that I got with the Mexican body. I'm not going to use a micro tilt uh, operation on this. I, I just didn't want to. I have in the past been able to place a uh, micro tilt, uh, like a, it's like a captured nut and a little Allen screw or whatever that goes inside that. I have been able to install those with a Forstner bit into the Mexican bodies and then use an American neck with them and uh, that's turned out great but uh, just don't want to do that this time all right so this is the platform uh, this is gonna hold all my other parts so let's do let's see I guess we're gonna do a pit guard next Okay, well here's the pick guard I'm going to use today. The uh, the pick guard has 59 Fender pickups in it, and uh, it's got CTS pots. I think all of them are 250k, and it's got an Oak Grigsby style five-way switch. I've done a little wiring in here. I've added um, a treble bleed circuit, which is uh, basically a capacitor and a resistor that go across a couple of the tabs on the volume pot, and uh, you can read up on that online. They're, they're pretty cool. I think this one is made with a, a 220 uh, resistor and uh, it looks like I used a 500 picofarad cap on there. So anyway, I uh, also have my uh, 0 0.022 uh, capacitors, my, my capacitors for tone. I've used two of them. I didn't really need to. I just did because I, I like the look. And um, those are off of an old 70s uh, Fender amplifier, and so I just kind of repurposed those, but they're really cool. I mean, they're kind of like orange dips, only they're blue. So, anyway, um, let's just go ahead and get this thing started. I've got to route the wire for the. Well, actually, let me do this first. Let me bolt down the bridge ground wire or the body cavity ground wire. That just connects the shielding on the pit guard and all the grounds into the shielding on the cavity itself. So that sort of makes a, a complete you know, shielded bubble that all this stuff can go into. You also have to run a bridge ground wire through the body. Where is my hole for that? Right there. And then you have to run the jack wiring through this hole. Okay. Now we can secure the pick guard. Next thing I'm going to do is connect that bridge wire that I ran through the body. It just dawned on me that the strat, uh, or the fender placement of these uh, claws, the or the uh, the springs for the claw rather, uh, are 
really not the way that I prefer to run mine, so I'm gonna switch them around. Okay, that makes me happy. Last thing to do up here is this uh, jack, so I need to wire that next. Okay, I have a few other things I could do, but I think the next best thing to do is get a set of strings on this thing. I went ahead and ran the strings through the body. I did that because I'm reusing a set of strings that I was uh, that I was previously using on a different guitar. They're they're new strings, but they they're they're still curled up on the ends, and I didn't want you to see me fight with that. This thing has locking tuners, so I'm just going to be able to. Uh, essentially run these through and cut them off a lot shorter than the strings were on the other guitar. So, let's see here. Oh yeah. When you're installing strings on fender locking tuners, or most locking tuners for that matter, you need to loosen the locks. <laughs> All right, that should work better. All right, well, I got my strings on. Um, everything's fine except the bridge is not floating at all. And I really prefer it to float just a little bit so that there's a slight amount you can sort of bend the strings up if you want. I usually try to get up about, I don't know, a millimeter or something like that. I mean, just, just a little bit. And so uh, all I do on that is, uh, you know, you've got the claw screws back here and I just use a really long screwdriver so I get the straightest angle possible. And you don't have to go a whole lot. I'm just gonna go a quarter turn. I'm gonna count my turns as I go, try to keep it even number of turns on each side take a look at my bridge and I may have to retune just to make sure that I'm not going too high but I still haven't introduced any right now so let's see how many of these it's going to take to introduce a little gap still no gap somebody had this thing cinched down pretty tight So I'm at three quarters, still no gap. That's about a full turn, still no gap. I'll go ahead and put a half in it. Starting to see a shade. That's one and three quarters. It's starting to come up just a little bit. So I'm gonna stop at two, retune, see where I'm at. There would be another way to do this. Um, you could change the lighter springs. Um, Obviously with three springs in there now, it's that's about the lightest spring tension I would want on it. Let me flip this over and get it tuned up again. Okay, that's good enough for me. Now um, I'm gonna set my action. So with action, what you're looking for is you need you need to get a graduated ruler of some sort that has uh, thousandths of an inch or millimeters or you know I guess sixty fourths could be used, but just something that can give you an idea of how far the strings are off the twelfth fret. Right now, this one's sitting at about 
I'd say 65,000 on the low E side, which is a little bit high. So I'm gonna lower that down. Okay, so I have the right Allen wrench. Uh, all I'm gonna do is you, you have to sight this from the side and then you're gonna lower the saddle by loosening the Allen screws. You wanna keep, keep about the same number of turns on each side so that that thing stays level. Okay, so that's the way you adjust each string. I'm gonna go down the line. I may not film all of them, but basically you want to check the height, and I use about 59 thousandths on the uh, the low E string side and 49 thousandths on the high E string side. Usually I try to keep that higher setting through the wound strings and then the lower setting through the unwound strings. Basically, um, after you adjust the saddle here, take a you know your your finger and fret every fret from at least the 15th on up and just make sure you don't have any dead spots or buzzing and that that makes sure that uh, you don't have any problems up in the high area because that's usually where the problems occur because this is the flattest part of the neck um, you know all the relief comes in strong right up until about the eighth fret and then it starts to kind of level out so okay well it's gonna be a quick build today because I checked out the intonation and I think because this was on this guitar before, or at least this body before, it was pretty spot on. There really wasn't much to show you. I only had to adjust this bottom E string and that was it. So uh, if you haven't checked out my quick tip videos, I believe there's one in there on intonation. If not, you can check out my other builds and there's plenty of them uh, that where I do intonation. And I did pick up height. Uh, pick up height, I set at 564 on the bass side and 464 on the treble side. Um, I definitely have a quick tip video on this. It's it's geared towards Stratocaster pickups and it shows you how to do the uh, adjustment there. Um, essentially you fret the guitar at the last fret and then you measure that distance and you try to set 564 on this pole and 464 on this pole and then you adjust those screws to achieve that. The only other thing I've got to do to finish this build up is to put the back plate on. So I'll do that next. All right, well, that's it. Um, thank you all again for watching another episode. Just remember, if you like my stuff, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.